Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Breeds. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you were already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about book options to satisfy the sightseeing prompts for the amazing readathon. If you are not familiar, The Amazing Readathon is a competitive team-based readathon inspired by The Amazing Race. It was created by Brie over at Four Paws in a Book, so I will be sure to leave her channel as well as the announcement video linked down below so that you can get all the details. It is quite a complicated and intricate readathon, so I would definitely encourage you to go get all the details from her video, and she is going to be able to explain it all a lot better than I can. But essentially, in between the main prompts that you have to satisfy for the readathon, which you do not know ahead of time because she drops them every couple of days throughout the month of June, there's going to be an opportunity to sightsee. And essentially what that means is there's an opportunity to earn bonuses by satisfying bonus prompts. For this readathon, there are five levels of bonuses. There are 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 point bonus prompts that you can satisfy to earn more prompts for your team. And for this video, I wanted to go ahead and focus purely on books that would satisfy the 400 and 500 level bonus prompts, because not only, of course, are they the highest level, but also strategically, it is going to be better to focus on the higher level bonus prompts, especially if you don't believe that you are going to be able to sightsee quite frequently. So if you are a slower reader and you don't believe that you're going to be able to sightsee very often between when the major prompts drop, you might want to go ahead and focus solely on the upper level bonus point. Now, before we get in, I have a couple of caveats. I am a moderator for the Amazing Readathon Discord and I am on Team Spooky. All of the teams are genre based and Team Spooky encompasses mystery, thriller, horror, suspense, all of that good stuff. And so because of that, my recommendations today are going to be solely focused around books that would qualify for Team Spooky genres. Now, you don't necessarily have to read exclusively in your team's genre. You can read any type of genre that you want to, but if you read within your team's genre, you get additional bonus points. You get 50 bonus points on top of everything else. You also get bonus points if you are reading books by authors who are confirmed queer, so confirmed on the LGBTQIAP plus spectrum. Now, for the most part, I've only really focused here on team spooky books, but of course, I definitely encourage y'all, if you can find books that are within your team's genre and by queer authors, I would highly encourage you to read those as well if you possibly can. So all of the books that I talk about here are going to be purely for Team Spooky, but again, you can be on any team and read these books, especially if you are struggling to find books within your own team to satisfy the prompts. I will say that Brie has mentioned that not all sightseeing prompts are geared towards all genres, so it's definitely going to be harder for specific genres to satisfy certain sightseeing prompts, and so because of that, while I tried to get at least five different options for each of these categories, some of the categories have way more and some of them have less. And also, the final caveat here is that my recommendations are done based to the best of my knowledge and ability. Not all the books that I'm going to talk about in this video I have read before, but based on the research that I've done, they should satisfy the prompts in question. If I am incorrect about any of these, please feel free to share that in the comments below so that everyone else can be aware. Now, I have a lot of books to talk to you about today. So for that reason, I am not going to be saying absolutely anything about the books in terms of what they are about or anything like that. Also, if you would like to see a video like this for the 100, 200, and 300 point level, please feel free to let me know that in the comments as well, and I'm happy to make one. I just wasn't going to be able to make one video for all of them because it would have taken literal hours to film and then days and days and days to edit. Again, we are only focusing on 400 and 500 level points. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the very first prompt for the 400 point level is a one word title. So Creep, Freak, and Wonderland, all by Jennifer Hillier, have one word titles and would satisfy this prompt. Falling by TJ Newman would satisfy this prompt. Carrie, It, and Misery, all by Stephen King, are also one word and would satisfy this prompt. Barity by Colleen Hoover. Hostage by Claire McIntosh, You by Caroline Kepnes, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, Unsub by Meg Gardner, Shiver by Ali Reynolds, Breathless by Amy McCullough, Blindsided as well as most of the books in the Grant County series by Karen Slaughter, as well as the first several books in her Will Trent series also only contain one word titles. All of these titles only contain one word and would easily satisfy the one word title prompt. All right, so next prompt was to read a book written by two or more authors. And I honestly, I struggled with this one a little bit just because off the top of my head, I wasn't really able to come up with any like thriller mysteries that are co-written by two or more authors. The only ones that I could think of pretty easily were the thrillers co-authored by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pacannon. I have read every single one of the books that they have authored together and I have really enjoyed them. So that would probably be my top recommendation. However, there are some pretty big names in this genre field that often work together with other authors. James Patterson, he is probably one of the most prolific authors of all time. Same with Stephen King, are consistently partnering with other authors. So even if you were just to look up James 
James Patterson or Stephen King, you are likely going to be able to find at least one book that you are interested in that they partnered with somebody else to write. Another duo that has been writing books together for a long time is Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. And to my knowledge, they do write books within the like the mystery thriller genre. So if they are of interest to you, you can definitely go ahead and find books written by them to satisfy this prompt. And the final one that I have for this category is Liv Constantine. Apparently that is actually a sibling duo, two sisters writing under one name. And of course, I will just quickly mention here that mystery thriller horror anthologies would likely work well for this as well, because they're going to be written by multiple authors. So if you have an anthology out there that you are wanting to read, now might be the time to do that. Next, we have the prompt to read a book with a non-human main character. So the following books, to my knowledge, would satisfy this prompt. We have Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. I believe this contains a grumpy, sassy crow as one of the main characters, and I admit to being intrigued by that. We also have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, one of the main characters, of course, and that is a vampire, so that is a non-human character. We, of course, also have It by Stephen King. Pennywise is considered a non-human character. And then we also have The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. There is a cat in there, I believe, that plays a very prominent role. And then actually the last of my recommendations for this category are all cozy mysteries because cozy mysteries love to feature their cat main characters. So we have the Mrs. Murphy series by Rita Mae Brown. We have the Cat Who series by Lillian Jackson Braun. And we have the Cat in the Stack series by Miranda James. If I'm not mistaken, I believe all of these series feature like human main characters, but their cats play an important role in like the mystery solving. But there is also a series called The Number Two Feline Detective Agency by Mandy Morton. And my understanding of that one is that all of the characters in that are actually cats. So take of that what you will. But these are just some of the main ones that I found for the mystery thriller horror category for non-human characters. Next, we have the prompt to read a book with only words on the cover. And this was actually surprisingly difficult, but we have The It Girl by Ruth Ware. We also have Long Bright River by Liz Moore, which is kind of like a crime fiction thriller, which I actually really, really enjoyed. I thought it was gritty. This is one that I actually flew through in like 24 hours. So I definitely wanted to mention it here in case that sounds like it could be up your alley. We also have Just Over Sunset by Stephen King. And this has the added benefit of being a short story collection. So this is one that you might be able to fly through pretty quickly because it's not going to be a full length novel. And then the last two I wanted to mention are actually very lengthy series. We have the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich and we have the Alphabet Murder series by Sue Grafton. For the most part, the covers of their books only feature text. So these are definitely two that would fit the bill if you're not able to find anything else that would work for this prompt. Next, we have the prompt to read a book that features a train, plane, or car on the cover. So I'm gonna quickly run through some of the covers that I found that feature this. First, we have Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda. Both Falling and Drowning by TJ Newman feature a plane on the cover, as does Hostage by Claire McIntosh. We have The Passengers by John Mars, Survive the Night by Riley Sager. And then we have The Book of Cold Cases and Murder Road, both by Simone St. James. All right, next we have the prompt to read a book with just one person on the cover. And this was actually quite easy. There are quite a few. So I'm just going to run through these really quickly. Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. False Witness by Karen Slaughter. Night Film by Marisha Pessel. The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. Wrong Place, Wrong Time also by Jillian McAllister. The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. The Therapist or The Prisoner both by B.A. Paris. Shiver by Allie Reynolds. Solitude of Wolverines or A Blizzard of Polar Bears both by Alice Henderson. And then we have The Night Swim and Dark Corners both by Megan Golden. The next prompt is to read a book involving a game. So we have The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. That is actually a pretty popular young adult thriller that I know a lot of people really love. There are also a couple of other young adult thrillers that feature games like All These Beautiful Strangers by Elizabeth Kleffoff, The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin, as well as Their Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington. We have The Family Game by Catherine Stedman, Her Deadly Game by Robert Dugoni, a book just entitled The Game by Scott Kershaw, The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict, The Last One by Will Dean, which features kind of a competition reality television style aspect to it. We have The Lion Game by Ruth Ware, The Escape Room by Megan Golden, and Never Have I Ever by Jocelyn Jackson. All of these thrillers, to my knowledge, feature a game in some capacity, whether it is a side plot, the main plot, what have you, there should be a game featured in these books. Next, we have the prompt to read a book with more than 100,000 ratings on Goodreads. And honestly, this is another one that is pretty easy too, especially when you consider some of the very popular thriller mystery horror writers. For example, if you were to look up any Stephen King novel, it's probably going to have way more than 100,000 ratings. Same with Riley Sager, same with Ruth Ware, and of course, the queen of mystery herself, Agatha Christie. But in terms of specific titles that definitely have more than 100,000 ratings, we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown, Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, The Secret History by Donna Tartt, The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, The Guest List by Lucy Foley, Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice, The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides, The Girl on the Train 
Train by Paula Hawkins and Verity by Colleen Hoover. So those are just some specific titles that have more than 100,000 ratings. But again, this is something that should be pretty easy to find. 100,000 ratings, I think is actually kind of like a pretty low bar, especially for some of the more popular mystery thriller horrors. So you can definitely find at the very least a mainstream mystery thriller horror to satisfy this prompt. All right, then we have a prompt to read a book by an author that uses initials. So let me quickly run through this list that I compiled. We have B.A. Paris, C.J. Tudor, T.J. Newman, M.L. Rio, V.C. Andrews, A.J. Finn, A.R. Torrey, S.A. Cosby, J.D. Robb, J.T. Ellison, and finally K.A. Tucker. Now I'm going to give a quick caveat about K.A. Tucker. K.A. Tucker is primarily a contemporary, contemporary romance author. However, she does have a couple of books like Keep Her Safe, which are more on the thriller-esque side. So just know that not all of her books will satisfy Team Spooky. All right, moving on into the 500 point realm, we need to read a book with exactly five words in the title. First, we actually have a brand brand new release that just came out. It is The Return of Ellie Black by Amiko Jean. So if you actually got this in your book of the month box, this might be one to save and hold on to for June to satisfy the sightseeing prompt because this would work very well. And then of course we have the classic And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This is one that would absolutely satisfy that prompt. Oddly enough, several of Ruth Ware's books satisfy this prompt. We have The Death of Mrs. Westaway, The Woman in Cabin 10, and The Turn of the Key, The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn, another very popular thriller book that would satisfy this. Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead, also five words in the title. None of This is True by Lisa Jewell, another pretty new thriller release, another one that is getting a lot of buzz that you can use to satisfy this prompt. A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham, What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall, The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins, One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus, another YA thriller that you could potentially add to your list if you're looking to primarily utilize YA thrillers to satisfy some of these prompts. Finley Donovan is Killing It, which is the very first book in the Finley Donovan series by L. Cosimano would satisfy this. The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix would satisfy this. And then finally, I have A Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson. Now this is technically the second book in her Dr. Alex Carter series. You don't necessarily have to read them in order. I would recommend that you do so. So if you've already read A Solitude of Wolverines, or if you plan on reading it at some point for this readathon, you could definitely go to A Blizzard of Polar Bears in order to satisfy this prompt. I'm going to plug those books whenever I can, just because I love them so, so much. And they're not talked about nearly as much as I would like them to. So definitely recommend A Blizzard of Polar Bears if you can fit it in. All right, next, the prompt was to read a book with footnotes. And this is definitely not a prompt that's geared to the Team Spooky genres. But specifically for Team Spooky, I was able to come up with three books that feature at least a handful of footnotes. We have Starling House by Alex E. Hero. It is definitely a genre blend between like horror and magical realism-esque. There's a haunted house, there's all kinds of things going on, and there are definitely several footnotes going on. That is a story that I personally love deeply and would love to see a lot of people read it. So that is a top recommendation. I've also been told that House of Leaves by Mark Danielewski also features footnotes. Now this book is a commitment. It is one that I have never read myself, but it is a very complicated story. It's got a lot of weird things going on in it. This is one that if you plan on reading it, it's probably going to be your one and only sightseeing book because you cannot double up on prompts. Like you cannot use one book to satisfy multiple sightseeing prompts. So if you pick this book, it is probably going to be your one and only sightseeing prompt. So I'm just putting that out there, but I did want to let you know that this book does have footnotes. And then the very last one that I was able to find is a book called Every Time I Go on Vacation Someone Dies by Catherine Mack. That is one that I personally haven't read, but I was recently watching a video by Victoria over at What Victoria Reads, and she had read this and said that it has footnotes. So take of that what you will. Like I said, this was a very hard one to satisfy. This is another one that I would love your thoughts and opinions on. If you know of any books for teen spooky genres that would satisfy this, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below because I was stymied when it came to this one. Next, you have to read a book with all five vowels on the cover. So A, E, I, O, and U. I admit that this was probably the most fun that I had trying to find books that satisfied this prompt. So again, I'm just going to quickly run through them. Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda, The Return of Ellie Black by Amiko Jean, The Haunting of Blackwood House, as well as The Haunting of Ashburn House, both by Darcy Coates, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, The Housemaid by Frida McFadden, The Final Girl Support Group, also by Grady Hendrix, Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead, A Solitude of Wolverines by Alice Henderson. So again, if you wanted to, you could read A Solitude of Wolverines to satisfy this prompt and then read A Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson to satisfy the prompt to read a book with exactly five words. You have A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina, and then A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. So all of these were books that I found that contain all A, E, I, O, and U on the cover. All right, then next you have to read a book that Brie gave five stars. Again, this is another one that's going to be easy peasy to satisfy because all you have to do is go to Brie's Goodreads, sort her read books by her rating, and you'll be able to see all of the books that she rated five stars. But I do have a handful here that would work for Team Spooky that she gave for five stars. So I will go ahead and mention them here. Brie is a very big Darcy Coates fan. So she gave Voices in the Snow by Darcy Coates five stars. She also gave A Dowry of Blood and An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson five stars. She also gave Horror Store by Grady Hendrix 
five stars. Dark Matter by Blake Crouch was also given a five stars. This is another genre blend because it's very heavy on the science fiction, but it is very much a fast paced thriller as well. So do with that what you will. We also have No Exit by Taylor Adams, which is one of my favorite thrillers of all time. I highly, highly, highly recommend if you have not read this story and you are looking for an excellent book to satisfy this prompt, No Exit would be my top recommendation. She also rated The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware, five stars, as well as An Anonymous Girl by Sarah Buchanan and Greer Hendricks. Moving on into the prompt of reading a book published before 2001, y'all. And this is another very, very easy prompt to satisfy because a lot of our more prolific and famous mystery thriller horror writers got their start before 2001. And a lot of the very, very long running series that we are all incredibly familiar with also started before 2001. But I did jot down a handful for you to keep in mind. So first of all, of course, any Agatha Christie was going to be written prior to 2001. Also, a lot of the Alphabet Murder series by Sue Grafton was written before 2001. Even just starting the Sue Grafton Alphabet Murder series would satisfy a lot of prompts. You would be able to read one of the books for a book written prior to 2001. You would be able to then read another book to satisfy the prompt with only text on the cover. You would then be able to read a book for the fourth book in a series. So the Alphabet Murder series by Sue Grafton checks a lot of boxes here. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. That is considered like a classic horror thriller novel that also has one word in the title. So you can use that to satisfy either one of those. The Secret History by Donna Tartt is another one that was published before 2001, as was A Time to Kill. And a lot of John Grisham, I would say, was also published before 2001. So he would be a good author to check out. We also have the Alex Cross series by James Patterson, which the first book I believe was published in the early 90s. So that is another series. And then we also have the Number One Ladies Detective Agency, which I believe also was started in the 90s. Again, this is a very small portion of the books that you're going to be able to find that were published before 2001. And of course, a lot of Stephen King's novels were published before 2001. I'm not a Stephen King fan. I haven't read anything by Stephen King, but I believe that man got his start with writing in like the 70s. So there's a plethora of books by him to choose from. Then we have the prompt to read a book with a person's name in the title. So we have Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. We then of course also have Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers, Who is Maud Dixon by Alexandra Andrews. Again, The Return of Ellie Black by Amigo Jean. Carrie by Stephen King. Rebecca, once again, by Daphne du Maurier. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine. The Finley Donovan series by El Casamano, of course, has Finley Donovan's name in it. The Haunting of Maddie Claire by Simone St. James. And then, of course, for some classics, you can consider Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, or you can consider Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. All right, then we're finally getting into the final prompts. This next one is to read a book over 500 pages. I actually struggled with this one a little bit just because I really had nothing on my own shelves that in this category that was over 500 pages. This, again, is a category that I feel like a lot of people in other genres like fantasy and sci-fi and stuff are going to have an easier time with. So a lot of my recommendations today are based on research that I've done. If you know that these books are not actually 500 pages, please feel free to leave that information down below or again, leave your recommendations of books that are over 500 pages that would fit the team spooky genres. But we have The Secret History of Donna Tart, It by Stephen King. Now I know that one's over 500 pages. If I'm not mistaken, that one's closer to like 1000 pages. And again, I'm going to reference House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. But again, this is one that you probably will not have enough time to read. We also have Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice and then a book called The Witch Elm by Tana French. So those are just some that I was able to come across that had 500 or more pages. Now I will give a caveat here that it's likely going to depend on the edition that you were reading because it's possible that the paperback might have more pages than the hardcover. So also take that into consideration when you are looking up these recommendations because it is going to depend on the edition that you have in hand. And if you are going to be listening to it on the audio, you're probably just going to have to do your best to determine whether or not the book has 500 pages or not. All right, and then the very final prompt and perhaps the prompt that was the biggest stinker aside from the footnote prompt is to read a book with less than a thousand ratings on Goodreads. This is very challenging to me because I really don't read a lot of indie published or self-published stories that might currently be under a thousand ratings. So it was really difficult for me to find answers to this. I would say that my biggest strategy at this point, if you have at all the possibility of obtaining arcs of books that have not been released yet, because chances are those books are not going to have a thousand ratings yet because they have not been released. So if you have something like NetGalley where you are able to read an arc for this prompt, that is what I would recommend. But I do also know that that's not the most accessible to everybody. Or if you're like me and you just really don't care about arcs, that's not something that you participate in. So I was able to find a couple of obscure titles that I had never heard of before that have less than a thousand ratings on Goodreads. Keep in mind, I've never read these books, so I'm not recommending them based on their content or their quality, just based on their ratings. There's a book called Silence Says the Most by Kathleen Bailey, Cold to the Touch by Carrie Hakoda, and The Ugly Truth by L.C. North. Also, that cozy mystery series that I referenced earlier called the Feline Detective Agency, the one where I believe 
all of the characters are actually cats. That seems to be a more obscure cozy mystery series. Almost every single one of the books that I could see had less than a thousand ratings. So if you are a cozy mystery fan, this might be one that you want to check out. Again, with the sightseeing prompts, you get the points. So you get the 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 points, even if the books are not within your team's genre. You just get additional points on top of them if you do read within your team's genre. And so that's why I wanted to focus on teen spooky, but really the possibilities are truly endless for these sightseeing prompts. All right, everybody, that is it. I've been filming this video for entirely too long, but I do hope that you found it helpful. I do hope that you found some inspiration for some books that you might like to read, whether or not they are on your radar or on your physical TBR already. If you have made it to the end of this video and you're not feeling chatty, please go ahead and leave me the ghost emoji in honor of Team Spooky, or as we call ourselves, the Stabby Ghosts. And if you have not already signed up for the amazing readathon, I would highly encourage you to do so. And I would love to have you on Team Spooky. Again, I will go ahead and leave Bree's announcement video down below. There's going to be a sign up link in her video as well, and a link to the Discord and all of that good stuff. We would love to have you. It is a lot of fun. It is a chaotic good time. So if you are looking for some inspiration, something to boost your reading, or just to have a good time with a really fun community, I highly recommend joining this readathon. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I try to post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books that I talk about in a video, except for this video, because even though I love y'all and I want to make things as convenient as possible, I am not going through and linking dozens and dozens of books. It's just not happening. <laughs> Until next time, y'all. Bye.